Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review. This review has been a long, long time coming. It's one of my favorite fragrances from one of my favorite niche houses, Papillon uh, Artisan Perfumes, if you want to be specific, which we like attention to detail here at Channel Ram. And we are going to discuss Salome, which is... I think one of her absolute masterpieces. It's funny because on the channel, I have reviewed every single sample that she sent me from Spell 125 to Hera to all of these other fragrances I don't own, Angelique, Tobacco Rose. I would love to own bottles of all of them. I think they're absolutely full bottle worthy, 100%. Uh, I actually have some of her bottles coming in the post from my brother, Rich Mitch. Thank you, my friend. Uh, he has been doing some work today on my behalf, getting the parcel to cross the ocean and come over to, to my side of the pond. So I cannot wait for that unboxing. That's going to be a monumental, probably the last big, huge, great haul that I have because of great friends in the community like Natalia. So wherever you are, Natalia, I hope you are doing well. Uh, I have not heard from you in a while, but uh, I hope you're climbing the highest mountains and living your best life, my friend. So um, today we're going to talk about Salome. But before we do that, we're going to do an unboxing, which speaking of kindness from the community, um, this is actually sent to me by Bexod, who is a real one. He's one of, uh, he is a true fragrance lover. He's a family man, truck driver, friend. You know, we communicate on, um, uh, on Instagram. We'll, we'll talk about perfume randomly sometimes. And he said, hey man, I'm a huge fan of the channel. I want to send you some stuff that I haven't heard you talk about. And I said, sure, I'll be glad to. And so this is what he sent me. Um, I guess I should have done this first. Sorry about that. We're going to have to suffer through me trying to cut this bad boy open. But uh, let's see what we get. Okay. All right. So I know I kind of have a small idea of what's in here to some extent. He sent me some pictures. But um, it's been a little bit, so I don't 100% remember. So let us see. Let us see what he sent. And it is a serious package. Um, so I hope you guys got your seatbelt on because this is going to be a little bit. So let me get the box out of the way. Um, okay. Let me see how I can do this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, exciting. Everyone loves a good unboxing. And if you don't, you're a communist. All right, let's see. This is very well packaged. I should, I should have, uh, I should have prepared ahead of time. This is very well packaged. Oh man. All right. Um, let's see. Well, I should have prepared. Apologies for being an unprepared ram. But we're not going back now, damn it. We can only move forward. Alright. I'm just going to cut into this. I'm just going to cut into it. That's it. You're coming out. And another box. It is a box inside of a box inside of a box. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Um, someone's going to just put where the actual review of Salome starts in the comments, I'm sure. Because this is going to take a little bit. But that's okay. Uh, I do not mind. Okay. There we have it. Samples upon samples upon samples. So let us see what we have. We've got Opium, the Pure Parfum from 1977. The vintage. I told you he's a vintage lover. Oh, look at the size of this sample, too. Oh, I cannot wait to wear some of these. Um, that is a win right off the bat. I love the Eau de Toilette, which I have peeking out right, right there. Um, but I've never smelled the Pure Parfum, so that is, that is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Um, okay. We're going to save some of these because they feel like f bottles. So we're going to save some of these. So we've got uh, Monsieur Rochas from the 1970s, an 80 proof 
eau de cologne version. Um, this is one of those old school sort of uh, masculine fragrances, which I have never smelled before. It's been on my wish list forever. Monsieur Rochas, um, the eau de cologne. Wow, I, I don't even think that particular concentration is listed in Parfumo. So I'm just going to put the Eau de Toilette, I assume, or maybe Eau de, Eau de Toilette Concentre. It's as close as we'll get. That is a um, Guy Robert creation, by the way, one of the all-time great perfumers who did the original Amouage, an Amouage for men, um, and so I'm very much looking forward to that. Monsieur Rochas. Um, looks right up my alley. Lavender, sage, carnation, galbanum, patchouli, oak, moss, tonka bean. Can't wait. Um, absolutely can't wait to get to know that one. And then we have... Um, ah, Trussardi Uomo Fresh, which uh, I did a review of the original Trussardi Uomo, if you would like to check that out on my channel. This is the Fresh Flanker which I hear is actually pretty good, but I've never had a chance to smell it. So Trussardi Uomo Fresh uh, came out in the year 2000, and it is, believe it or not, a fresh take on the original Trussardi. Uh, Alberto Murias and Christophe Laudemiel did that. That was on my wish list for a while, so take that off the wish list and put it on the decant list. So thank you, my friend. All right, let's see what's in this bad boy right here. This is... Uh, this is looking at me. This one is looking at me. <sighs> okay, so we have, first and foremost, we have Paco Rabanne Eau de Cal Calendre, which is the women's um, Chipra, if I'm not mistaken. Their original fragrance for women, Eau de Calendre, which I think Anuj may have sent me a sample somewhere in all the samples that I have up here. But O de Calendre. No, oh, maybe I spelled it wrong. Calendre. Calendre. Okay. So um, I believe this is the Eau de Toilette, if I'm not mistaken. But um, the original version, which I know his is a vintage bottle, was created by Michael High, I believe. It might be Michelle High, but I think it's maybe it is Michelle High. Um, and so that is exciting. I'm excited to get to try that. And then we have this little bad boy, which is Jacques Bogart Club 75 from 2016. I must admit, as far as value for money goes, if I was a college kid on a budget, I would just buy some of these Jacques Bogart fragrances. I think what they do is still so impressive for, um, for, for the money. I have no clue how they how they sell these fragrances for so cheap. Club 75, uh, cinnamon, lemon, orange, balsamic notes, lavender, apple, cedarwood, musk, and sandalwood. I'm sure that's gonna be just a easy to wear summer fragrance, but still very excited to get to know it. I love the House of Jacques Bogart. And then we have Story Green from 2015. Story Green by Jacques Bogart. Um, let's see, Story Green. Uh, okay, 2015. Yep, I've seen this green bottle. I've never smelled it before. Grapefruit, cardamom, pineapple, geranium, nutmeg, elemi, vetiver, patchouli, and cedar. So um, put that on the decant list. Thank you very much, my friend. And we have some more. Let's see what we have. Um, so we have this little bad boy, which is... Uh, Jacques Bogart Silver Scent Midnight from 2017. Silver Scent Midnight from 2017. I think I have one of the Silver Scents, and it reminded me uh, a little bit of uh, Icon, maybe a little bit of Icon. So this one's called Midnight Silver Scent Midnight from 2017. Okay, the blue, the blue version. Russian Sage, Orange Blossom, and Tonka Bean. Never smelled it, um, but I will, I'm excited to give that a try. And then we've got this little bad boy, which is Jacques Bogart Silver Scent from 2006, the original Silver Scent, which I don't think I have that either. 
um, and the original silver scent, uh, 2006, okay, uh, sweet and fruity lavender, orange blossom, lemon, cardamom, geranium, coriander, rosemary, nutmeg, uh, lychee, tonka bean, teak wood, and vetiver. I wish I knew who the perfumers were of some of these, but very excited to get to try that. And then we have this little bad boy, which is uh, what are you? You are very well packaged, my friend. Thank you, Bexad. Very kind of you, mate. Um, Jacques Bogart Silver Scent Deep from 2014. Um, Silver Scent Deep. So this is another flanker of Silver Scent. And Deep came out in 2014. It is Silver Scent Deep. Uh, bitter Orange, Orange Blossom, Grapefruit Wood, Clary Sage, Geranium, Nutmeg, Tonka Bean, Hazelnut Wood, and Vanilla. Uh, all right, that is on the decant. And finally, we've got Jacques Bogart Silver Scent Intense from 2009. Silver Scent Intense, um, which maybe that's the one I have a bottle of. I can't remember. No, I don't think so. I don't think my bottle's black. I'll have to check. Um, no, I've never, I've never smelled this one. Uh, Silver Scent with Oud in it. Okay, excellent, from 2009. Very interesting. Uh, so that is awesome. That is an awesome little lineup of samples. And then, to make it even better, he sent me these little bad boys. This is called uh, Mudan Valiant, which I've never heard of before. But um, there's the note listing on the back. Sort of uh, fresh, spicy black pepper, ginger, saffron, woody, cashmere wood, cedar wood and sandalwood, cedar, ambery notes, and musk in the base. And so, ah, there's little samples in here. There's the Mudan, Mudan. Um, and then we have Cafe Tuberosa, which I am not familiar with this one at all. Cafe Tuberosa, Cafe Tuberosa. Ah, it's an Atelier Cologne. Okay, yes. Espresso, Guatemalan cardamom, Ivory Coast, Cacao Absolute, Indonesian Patchouli, Jerome Epigny is the uh, perfumer. So I will put that as the decant. And then we've got um, Fragrance Dubois Heritage, which I talked a little bit about, I think, on my Fragrance Dubois live stream. But who knows, maybe I'll do an individual review of that one day. And... Um, Obvious Un Rose. Uh, this one I'm not familiar with at all. Uh, obvious. Obvious. Uh, Un Rose. Un Rose. Uh, 2020. Amelie Bourgeois is the uh, perfumer. Florida grapefruit, Italian bergamot, Mexican yellow tangerine. That is all over the world on citruses. Egyptian geranium, Bulgarian rose absolute, Indian cardamom, and Indian pink pepper. All right, that's going on the decant list. And finally, we have this little bad boy, which is... Um, Monsieur de Givenchy, Monsieur de Givenchy Eau de Toilette, which um, I don't think I've had a chance to, ah, yes, I do. I do have Monsieur de Givenchy Eau de Toilette, but not in this splash bottle like this. This is the 90, this is the vintage night. Look at that uh, Japanese writing on the back. Japan is an absolute hotbed of vintage perfumery. I wish I could just go there and bring a suitcase and just buy a bunch of vintages and come back. Um, but uh, I have this bottle of Monsieur de Givenchy, and it says, what's the proof on it? 90 proof. Ah, I bet you this is the same, actually. Now that I think about it, I bet you this is just kind of a splash version of the one I have, but uh, very good fragrance. And I will, I will discuss it at length one day on the channel. We'll do a full review. But thank you, my friend. This is absolutely awesome. Cannot wait to uh, dive into some of these. Monsieur de Givenchy, let me um, put
put the Mudan in my in my Parfumo. It's the only way I know what I have anymore. Mudan. Um, Valiant. Mudan Valiant. M-O-U-D-O-N. Maybe this isn't even in their database. M-O-U-D-O-N. Um, let me just try one more thing and then we'll give up and I'll try it later. Valiant. No, I don't think it's in their database at all. Okay, well, that's that's awesome though. At least one that I have uh, never even heard of. I'll get to I'll get to try and discuss on the channel one of these days. So thank you again, Bexod. Very very kind of you, my friend, um, and very generous sample sizes. So thank you so much. Um, okay, so now let's talk about the star of the show. So Papillon's uh, Salome, which always brings a smile to my face. I love wearing this stuff. I'm actually going to go on vacation this weekend, so I'm getting in the vacation mood, as you can see, uh, and I decided I was going to wear one of my all-time favorite fragrances, and it is Salome. So here's the thing about Salome. Um, Liz Moores herself describes it as a post-coital fragrance. It's hilarious. The British can take something uh, as raunchy as sex and make it sound elegant. Post-coital. Uh, and she does a hell of a job doing it. Uh, go watch my review on, or go watch my interview with her, if you would. I've often said many a times on, on previous videos that I think some of the absolute best content I've had a chance to put up on the channel is the interviews with the perfumers. So Sultan Pasha's been on, John Beeble from January Scent Project, uh, Russian Adams, Aris Ladore has been on multiple times, and um, Liz Morris has been on once, and she has agreed to come on a second time, which I cannot wait. But I want her to come on after I can talk about her new fragrance, Epona, uh, which will be coming out here in a couple months. I can't wait for it. I uh, cannot wait for Epona. I, I have had a preview sniff of it, and I can tell you it's an amazing leather fragrance. So that one is going to be right up my alley. Um, so this is literally Liz Moore's interpretation of sex on the skin, is what she calls it. And I've got a three and a half going on four hour dry down here right now. So I don't need to do a fresh spray because this is a very strong fragrance. It lasts a long time on the skin, okay? And um, so I, if you watch my interview with her, the way that she described Salome is saying that everyone kind of talked to her about these type of sexualized fragrances. Like, for example, um, one such fragrance is Musk Kublai Khan, okay? And so she said people talked to her about how animalic things like Musk Kublai Khan were and how sexualized they were. And then she smelled it and she went, well, that's not my interpretation of sex on the skin. So she wanted to make her own version. And she said that when she created Salome in 2015, you have to remember Papillon had only been a house for a couple years at that point. Um, so they were a newer house. Her family thought she absolutely lost the plot. They, they thought she lost her mind. She was crazy. How could she put something like this out? No one would like it. And here I am in 2024 talking about what a masterpiece I think it is. And I do. I think this is one of her masterpieces. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I waited to review it. I really wanted to wear more of it and get to know it more. And you can see I put a pretty good size dent in this bottle. Uh, when you have a huge collection like mine, you don't have to see dents all the way down to the bottom to know you've worn something. You know, this is... That, that means you've worn it. If you see a dent in a bottle at all, that means you're wearing it and loving it and enjoying it. And I love this stuff. Oh, it is. It's mind-blowingly good. So here's how it starts. It starts off on your skin right away with a growl. It doesn't purr. It doesn't need foreplay. It doesn't need to be warmed up. This starts right out of the gate, ready to go. And it's dirty. The cumin kind of pops right from the beginning. So the note listing on... Um, Parfumo is Hyracium, Jasmine, Carnation, Bitter Orange, Oak Moss, Orange Blossom, Patchouli, Styrax, Turkish Rose, and Bergamot, okay? In uh, Fragrantica, they add things like tobacco, which maybe there's a wisp of tobacco, maybe like a very small whisper, like uh, maybe an after-sex cigarette kind of tobacco, right? And then they add cumin, and I agree with that cumin addition. They also add uh, birch, birch tar, and I kind of agree with that as well. Uh, I don't usually like Fragrantica's note listings. I usually much prefer Parfumo, but I think Fragrantica may be a little closer to the uh, to the bullseye on that one. So, 
So here's the thing, when you first put this on, it's gonna growl and the cumin is gonna pop off your skin. In fact, the cumin is going to almost give this sweaty, almost like you've been locked in a hot summer room with your lover either all day or all night or maybe both. Um, and you're just in this enclosed room, right? It's hot, it's sweaty, your body is perspirating. And there is this kind of human skin element to this fragrance. There is definitely this human skin element. There's no getting around it. Um, it, it, it smells like you're literally smelling, uh, another person, your, your lover, let's say you're, you're, you're smelling your significant other and, um, it feels raunchy. It feels dirty. There's this almost anticipatory feeling to it. Um, like you're excited. Um, you're turned on. There's this, um, smell of almost like hormones coming through, even though, uh, I talked a little bit about pheromones when I reviewed pheromone pour home. There is no human pheromone like with the musk deer. Or someone was telling me about the duck. Uh, there's a there's a famous duck that has a musk pod on its ass that it rubs its head on to get the to get the musk uh, pod onto its head or whatever it does with its head after that. I have no clue. But um, so humans don't have obviously real pheromones like a deer or or, or the the famous duck that has the uh, the uh, um, the musk pot on its ass, but there is something very suggestive about this, almost like you know the the uh, if humans did have pheromones, you could just imagine this like seeping out of your pores. Okay, that is the feeling of uh, of Salome when you wear it. Oh, it's so beautiful, and I'll and I'll tell you, you cannot get away if you know vintage perfumery and you know the past. You cannot get away from the comparison to stuff like this. For me, this is the perfect comparison. Bala Versailles, go watch my review of uh, Bala Versailles. This is the pure parfum. Um, and and so uh, you can't get away from that, okay? There is definitely this suggestive, um, uh, you know, in, in Bala Versailles, I talked about how maybe the unchaste ladies of Versailles in the 1700s before it was so easy to hop in a shower. You had to take a bath back in the day. They had to draw the water and all that crazy stuff, or you had to go to a pond or whatever it was. It wasn't as easy. So people didn't take baths as often. They just powdered their wig or threw on some perfume on top of it. And if you can imagine that undercurrent of kind of dirty body feeling, it's definitely there. And it's, it's um, like I said, suggestive but still classy. That's the thing about this. I have no problem wearing this out and about in public. Um, it's floral. It's, an, it's well, the floral aspect we'll get to a little bit later, but you can see the florals that I mentioned. Obviously, it's made up of, um, florals make up a big part of the composition, but when I smell it, I get more of the animalics and this undercurrent of this orris powder, butter, you know, powdery musk, and, and and also it gets compared to Musk Tonkin by Parfum d'Empire, which I am a big fan of. I like this fragrance a lot, but I like Salome even better, if that makes sense. Um, I think this is good, but I think the tuberose, the turned up tuberose, um, and the, the, the muscanone in there kind of react a little bit differently on my skin, and I prefer Salome. I would, I would wear Salome over Musk Tonkin. Um, but there is something about that dirtiness that... Um, it's almost like dirty deeds done, okay? But behind closed doors, because you don't want to be obscene, you want to be classy, right? So it's kind of, you, you do your own business behind closed doors. It's never lewd. It's, it's um, you know, it's, uh, it's still classy, as I said. So as the clock ticks and you wear this fragrance, once it hits about 45 minutes to an hour, um, you get this almost like um, anxiously waiting slow procession of the of the clock kind of circling waiting for your lover to arrive but the fragrance is also kind of slightly changing and that sharp cumin with a little bit of the bitter orange and, and bergamot in the opening to kind of lead you into the fragrance now like i said it growls from the beginning but there is a little bit of bergamot to to get you to enter um and it starts to turn once you hit about that hour that's where it starts to turn slightly smoky um, almost like the high racium, the animalic note is smoking a little bit. Like I said, maybe an after sex cigarette, or there is this, um, sort of, uh, leathery touch, like this furry leathery touch that starts to come out. And even now, three and a half hours, four hours in, I can get it. I mean, you get that kind of furry, gentle, um, you know, oh, just beautiful. I mean, almost like if your lover had like a foxtail or something, there's a little bit of that furry, um, but 
very, this is a very sexualized fragrance. You can't get away from it. You can't describe this fragrance without talking about that. Um, and so, like I said, it turns very furry and leathery and smoky. And some folks describe this as a animalic floral sheepra. Okay. It gets described as a sheepra. Now, uh, there's no labdanum listed in the Parfumo note listing um, or the Fragrantica note listing. So, you know, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was some labdanum in here, let's say. Uh, and the, when you think about kind of the cumin and that sheepra aspect, it does remind me a little bit of one of my favorite fragrances of all time, which is Diaghilev. And Diaghilev uses a huge amount of, um, and you can see how panicked I am, how little I have left. I, I absolutely love Diaghilev. Even if I never smelled this again, I would remember this smell until the day I die. I mean, this is like one of those piercing smells. It just, it just uh, digs its way into your memory uh, and it stays. Um, it's so beautiful. But the cumin in here uh, and the mixture of animalic civet and castorium and all these other things give off this very sexualized smell in Diaghilev. I've talked about it. Go watch my full review on Diaghilev. It's my, probably my favorite niche fragrance. Uh, it is that good. It is just amazing. And uh, Salome gives a, a little bit of Diaghilev vibes, especially if you think about it in terms of a Shepra, okay? Um, the sexualized cumin, the animalic notes slightly will remind you of Diaghilev, okay? Um, but it wears much more like a vintage perfume. It wears much closer to Bala Versailles for me. It's almost like you kind of took these two and maybe just added little trace elements of Musk Kublai Khan and Musk Tonkin. Th those four are the big, are the big four that I would kind of compare Salome to. But mostly, if you made me pick one, it would be this. It would be vintage Bala, Bala Versailles. Now, uh, Liz Moores said that, um... She had the EDC, the Eau de Cologne version of Bella Versailles, and it was much more talcum powder and fluffy, you know, musks, and, and it was like a cuddly scent, okay? Uh, and so the talcum powder side on her skin came out much more from the EDC. She didn't get as much of the animalics as I got from the Pure Parfum, okay? I've heard some other people say, no, the EDC is more animalic and the Pure Parfum is less animalic, but... From what she has told me about her experience with the EDC of, of Bala Versailles, my guess is, is that the Pure Parfum is, is more animalic and the um, uh, eau, de, eau de Cologne that she has is more of the talcum powder, fluffy musk, right? So when I'm comparing it to Bala Versailles, I'm comparing it to the Pure Parfum, all right? So you can go check that out uh, on my review if you want to hear my thoughts on it. But um, what's funny is underneath all of this sweaty, raunchy, animalic notes is this iris, okay? Almost like this forest butter, forest concrete, and, and musk kind of mixing together. And it came to me, uh, it almost hit me like a thunderbolt, actually, that this is how I would imagine Francesca Bianchi wishes she could make a fragrance like this. Francesca Bianchi has tried over and over and over again to create a fragrance like Salome, in, in my opinion. She did it in uh, so many fragrances. A Lover's Tale, uh, Under My Skin. Uh, I reviewed Neroli Libertine. I'm going to review Unspoken Musk. I'm, uh, I'm going to review a couple other Francesca Bianchi's that I'm sitting on, like Black Knight and all this other stuff. Um, they all have this undertone of Oris Concrete, which she overdoses. I think she's a little bit of a lazy perfumer, and I've called her out on that. I like some of her fragrances. I think uh, Under My Skin and Sticky Fingers. Sticky Fingers is the other one that has that. I like the vintage throwback to the 70s patchouli hardcore kind of opening that she did there. But um, for me, what's crazy is she basically made uh, Francesca Bianchi took that DNA and has made fragrance after fragrance after fragrance after fragrance and people buy them and buy them and buy them. Liz Moores did this once. You know, she hasn't done 20 flankers of Salome and called them different things or anything like that, right? Uh, and so for me, uh, under my skin is cuddly and, and kind of, uh, uh, you know, warm and it's got the flowing resins and all that stuff. And it's nice, you know, it's like, okay, you had a nice night. You tell your friends you had a nice night. You had fun. Salome is like a night you'll never forget in your life. That's kind of the difference between the two for me. 
And I think this is better than anything Francesca Bianchi did. Now, if you made me compare this to one Francesca Bianchi fragrance, though, it would be Under My Skin. Under My Skin is the closest Francesca Bianchi ever came to this, but it's, um, it, the animalic tones are a little bit more hidden. It's literally like the animalics are under the skin when you wear Under My Skin. Uh, it feels like there's, there's skin covering it up. It's not allowing it to breathe. This is being released. This is an explosion. This is a release when you wear Salome, okay? And um, the other thing I appreciate, like I said, Liz Morris has not, this is nine years ago that she made this. She hasn't made it over and over and over again, hasn't done all these flankers. Um, she, to me, Liz Morris is a true artist. She creates from within. She creates things that mean things to her. And um, she doesn't follow, you know, somebody who is a marketing genius easily could have said if she would have done all these other fragrances with takes on this DNA, she would have sold a boatload of bottles. But it doesn't feel like she's in it for that. Obviously, every brand needs to sell bottles to continue going. Uh, maybe her sales would have increased if she did all these different takes on Salome and called them different things. But I love how she kind of um, managed to, I love how Liz Moores manages her portfolio. How she says, or, there'll never be anything in there that I won't wear personally. And, um, you know, I also love how she managed to kind of keep that dirty aspect. So as the fragrance dries, okay, like I said, four hour dry down. And I have a ton of experience with this fragrance, but as it, as it dries, okay, the dirty aspects continue. You know, sometimes you smell a fragrance and it's dirty in the opening. And then as 15, 20 minutes go by, it's gone. And you're like, huh, where did it go? Come back. Uh, this one doesn't act that way. Uh, this one, the cumin heads into the dry down, that dirty animalic skin, like sweaty skin, you know, body to body against your partner, right? That lasts into the dry down, even though the fragrance becomes smoother, it doesn't have that sharpness in, that you get in the beginning. Um, it, it feels like the dripping sweat on your body has like blended the cumin with cinnamon and other easier to wear spices. Um, and that's where that tobacco note can, can potentially come out in, in the mid and into the base. Um, and like I said, that tobacco note adds coarseness and a little bit of texture. Now, uh, I haven't given much attention to the florals, really for a reason, because um, there is jasmine, there is Turkish rose, there is orange blossom, and there's carnation. Four big florals make up the uh, floral heart of uh, Salome. But when I wear the fragrance, she created a fragrance that I know from a technical standpoint, florals play a big part. It's impossible to get around that. It's literally impossible to get around the fact that the florals play a huge part in this fragrance, okay? <laughs> but it doesn't smell to me like you're getting this big hit of floral. Of uh, It's not like a big floral bomb. So you know how some fragrances smell uber floral and, you know, the florals jump off your skin and that's really what you detect first here. It feels like sometimes you'll, you'll sniff the fragrance and you may get a hint of the rose or you may get a hint of the spicy kind of uh, green smelling carnation. Um, and, but, 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 but she managed to create this fragrance that uses animalics in a way that tell the story that she wanted to tell, right? Is it the most animalic fragrance you're ever going to smell? No, I said something very similar actually about Val Bala Versailles. I said, this is not the most animalic fragrance you're ever going to smell. It's just, it's not the way that these two are kind of set up. But I think this is maybe even a little bit more animalic than Bala Versailles. Um, but they both play in the same space, okay? This is like a niche version of Bala Versailles, the, uh, the Pure Parfum. That's, that's really the one that uh, I can speak on. It's the one that I know the best. Um, and so for me, she managed to kind of uh, use her usual energy and passion and knowledge. And she always surprises me too with the quality of her, of the ingredients that you smell in her releases. Uh, everything that you smell is top of the line quality ingredients. And for a perfumer who was never taught how to, how to blend, um, you know, she went to a week or two course or something and just learned all this on, on the fly. I am very, very impressed. And um, so like I said, I like how she kind of um, puts it all together to tell her story. And then she doesn't go back to it. She moves on to the next thing, the next thing in her creative process. 
Uh, and, and so I have to say bravo, Liz Moores, for creating something. I mean, just even if a, even if a perfumer trained at the best schools created something like this, I would say bravo. But what you have done, I am very, very impressed with. Um, so huge fan. When people ask me nowadays, hey, what are some niche houses I should check out? Instantly, Papillon is the first that kind of comes to mind. Um, because I think they uh, represent what a niche house should be properly. There's nothing wrong with Francesca Bianchi's fragrances, but I think when you put those two uh, girls head to head, Liz Moore's wipes the floor with uh, Francesca Bianchi, in, in my opinion. Now, if you gave me a bottle of Under My Skin or A Lover's Tail or something like that, would I wear it? Yes, absolutely I would. Uh, I don't think they're bad fragrances per se, but if I was going to give my hard-earned money to one of them, Papillon wins every day, in my opinion. Every day, twice on Sunday, and I cannot wait to discuss her new release, Hera, with you guys. So that's my take. Bravo, Liz Moores. I don't rate fragrances, but if I did, I could not imagine docking one point, even one point from this. This is... I think it's a masterpiece, but I think you would appreciate it more if you know the history. If you've smelled things like this, and you've smelled Diaghilev, and you've smelled Musk Kublai Khan, and you've smelled Musk Tonkin, I think you'd appreciate it even more. But if you've never smelled any of those, and you want kind of a niche entryway into this type of perfumery, I think Salome is, um, is definitely should be on your to sniff list, 100%. Um, especially if you're into animalic or getting into animalic fragrances, this is special stuff. Very special. So thank you, Liz Morris, for creating this for us. Um, and, uh, I cannot wait for round two on our interview and I cannot wait to discuss Epona on the channel. So cheers, everyone. Love to hear your thoughts on Salome down below. Leave your comments. Uh, I'd love to see your faces in the comments as always. So thanks everyone for watching, subscribing, uh, liking, commenting, all the stuff you do. I um, I have to say we did just pass 8,000 subscribers, which is crazy. And I have no clue if I'm even going to have time to do an 8,000 subscriber kind of celebration video. We may just have to save it for 10,000 this time. But I do want to at least acknowledge that we passed 8,000. So thank you to each and every one of you who is a subscriber to the channel and made this happen. It is a pleasure doing these videos for you guys. Cheers. Have a great day. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.